pseudo camouflage. Huh. This is going to be Hebrews 9 here in a second. Hoping the contrast would be better so you could see a big giant cantrail. But so what we'll do here is uh read chapter nine. I hope you're in for the long haul. And that he says, <clears throat> excuse me, wow, all right, can I get an amen for clearing your throat? <laughs> In that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared. The first part, in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary, and behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, and which were the golden pot that had the manna. Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory, overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. But in the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while the first tabernacle was still standing. It was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him who performed the service perfect in regard to the conscience concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings, baptisms, and fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of Reformation. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come, with a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood and bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then, likewise, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. 
and according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. I'm going to speak on that. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often, since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. For the law, having shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For the law can never, with these same sacrifices, make those who approach perfect. Hebrews chapter 9. Now I'm going to bring something to your attention. You pagans. All pagans sacrifice with blood. And I think that there is a forgetfulness of this amongst the people that it requires blood. So your abortions are evil. So your wars are evil. So your death sentences are evil. I'm now going to say something extremely controversial, I'm assuming. I could be wrong. Those who pray... No, that's not what I want to say. Those who hope and prefer the return of Jesus Christ in power, you need to rethink what you're thinking. Because if murder can be thought, according to Jesus, then you are asking for the murder, for the death, of a lot of people. A third of the earth will perish. That's pretty sick. If you're praying for that to happen. So what you need to do is you need to get up. You need to get out of your seat. Right? And you need to get out. And you need to witness to people. The best way that you can. Maybe maybe your witness isn't this. Maybe, maybe you don't w witness to... Gangsters and druggies and illiterates. Maybe what you should be doing is searching for people who like to do good deeds. And the people that like to do good deeds. If you're not comfortable with it, fret nothing. You're going to be like, get in there and read Ephesians 6 for yourself. But if you're not comfortable with it, invite them to church. Provided you go to a, some kind of decent church and not an apostate church. But it's that simple. 
invite them to church. Invite them to your house for supper and Bible reading. And be like, hey, this is what we do with our supper. We read the Bible out loud to each other. You don't have a woman read Proverbs. Because a lot of Proverbs is, well, a lot of the beginning of Proverbs is written from the perspective of wisdom, who is characterized as a she. And so that works out pretty good. Read a psalm. Sing a psalm, if you can. And then read Jesus' words. Like, don't, don't read Paul as someone inside your house. It's not going to make any sense. But read, read the Beatitudes. And, and that'll get stuck in your head. And maybe they'll respect you for your boldness, which I have found to be true. Okay, fair warning. I've also been punched in the face <laughs> for sharing the gospel on my own. But that was not in my house. <laughs> so, hey, if you're not called to be a street preacher, fret nothing. If you were concerned about feeding people, and you try to make sure that you have enough food to feed people, you will be fed. If you were concerned about giving beds to the homeless, you will have a place to sleep. All right. Cherish this new love. Be well.